Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Golden Rod Challenges League podcast. We had our first week of games and boy did we have some great games. I'm Spartan Tano, over here is my colleague Chaos Esp- uh, Chaotic Espion even, and my friend over there Robo Retro, but he's very silent today. Uh, we've got his photo up, but uh, he-, he actually couldn't make it, so... I didn't want to change the camera screens from what, from three of us to two of us. So Robo's just going to have his little photo up there. But the important thing to talk about is we have some updates for you, chat. So I don't know if people know, but there is a French league, the LFPU. Um, I think it stands for La Française Pokemon Unite or something like that. Something and like that. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. But that I mean, it's a big league. Uh, some of the teams in our league have decided that they just want to go play that and only that, which I understand because they do have a pretty big prize ball, but uh, very disappointing. Uh, so we've lost intergovernmentalizations and we've also lost Supriya Sucra, but no love lost there because we have gained some new teams anyway. And we've had a couple of teams, huge shout out to Plush Keepers, who have decided they're going to do both leagues because they just want to play Pokemon Unite. And I love that. I think that's really great by them. So huge shout out to those guys. Um, but yeah, let's get stuck into these two, these two teams that are joining then, Chaos. You got anything you can tell us about them? I think you might have a little bit more that you can tell us about because I think you've casted both of these in a, in a final recently. But we've got Bautista Crew and Team Int, uh, two very strong Spanish teams. Uh, Bautista Crew, a couple of their members were part of a team that had originally signed up for the league and then needed to, uh, needed to back out. Uh, but they've come back and they're joining us for round for the second round and then team int as well but they had a pretty decent finish didn't they recently um one of the tom which you casted yes so a huge shout out to the spanish teams by the way guys love having you on board really hyped for that but yeah i casted both of them on the engage weeklies last friday with tins and they were both amazing teams we ended up following team int all the way through chat and they were just 2-0 in everyone they came across it was fantastic but then they ended up in the final with batista crew who we hadn't seen on the broadcast and they it was such an amazing game i think it ended up being 3-1 it was a really close game fantastic battle from both teams and it was really exciting to cast so these are two amazing additions to this league and to be honest i think it rounds out our league really well it's not so much like any team is going to run away with this anymore, which I really like. I, I think that's awesome. No, 100% is something I was going to bring up, but as much as we enjoyed having Inter in and obviously the caliber of player they were, we did kind of suspect it was going to end up being a <laughs> clean sweep for them around the top and Sakura Super being a, a somewhat close second. Um, but with those two both going out and Batista's gun coming in, Team Inc coming in, probably will still be front runners for a ton, but it's definitely not as big a skill gap and it yeah it gives pretty much every single team an opportunity to win this tournament regardless yeah. of whether they win it through the league format or if it's through the um playoffs yeah 100 percent, mate and i think the thing is like we still have probably a little bit of that divide of like the upper side of the league and the well mid to lower side of the league but if we've learned anything from week one chat, I don't know if you've seen the clips or if you've watched the stream, it's going to be up on YouTube um, when, when this goes out, probably either this day or tomorrow. Um, so go watch those games because the one takeaway that I got from it is that I don't think teams were as, as far ahead in the league as I thought they were. I, I We had some really close games in some of those games. I mean... Anlaha, for example, are a fantastic team, but I thought Arcade Aces had a fantastic run in uh, with them. And, you know, while, while we're on about it, Chaos, let's have a review of <laughs> the last week's games because obviously the, the first day we had Arcade Aces against Anlaha. Um, and then it was Blaze, was it Oblivion against. Let me remember off the top of my head. Oblivion. It was Misfit, Misfits and the Plush Keepers. That's, That's the one. one. That's yeah. the one. <laughs> um and that was a thrilling exercise that was was amazing i think the best one of the best games i've seen in a long time um really really great to see from both of those teams they just did not give up i think it went but you know plush keepers winning one game misfits winning another game and then eventually misfits coming to get the 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 two one but yeah i really realized from that week how close this league actually is um and i don't think the teams that i thought were going to run away with it really will anymore no, 100%. And obviously, we saw Inter play Blazing Phoenix um, on Sunday. We might as well touch on that a little bit. Um, obviously, 
Blazing Phoenix of a team that we both unfortunately predicted to finish ninth, which is obviously no shame with the how close this league is. And Inter, we expected to run away with it, and it was really comfortable for Inter um, in those games. But yeah, the games between ourselves and Amlaha were closer than we expected. Obviously, the time playing them, it didn't feel as close as it actually looked on the um, mm. on the VOD afterwards. But then the plush keepers and misfits game it was that, that was insane. It was just back and forth constantly. The second game particularly just couldn't, couldn't take your eyes off it. Yeah, I mean, and as, you know what, chat? We have some clips for you from these games. We picked out some clips that we thought were really exciting to show on the podcast. So we're going to do that now. Apologies to our Spotify listeners. You won't be able to actually see this, um, although I do add the video to Spotify, so hopefully you can see it. Yeah, so this was from the first game between Arcade Aces and Amlaha. And as you can see from the scoreline for the first two and a half minutes, Amlaha have been in full throttle control of this game. They've been absolutely dominant. They've not got They've not particularly got an early game um, team either. They've just absolutely dominated both lanes. Top lane, they got the Gyarados Evolution early, so that snowballed. Bot lane, myself and um, and Loopy, we can take anything off the Mum's Wine and the Mew. Um, and at this point, they'd just taken both objectives. We'd left Greninja top to deal with Vialeki. And this just kind of goes to show how quickly games can turn around and unite. So obviously we're 160 points behind at the start of this clip and if you see it's six minutes 31 is it five yeah on the timer. Five, five minutes 31 if we just roll it on and we see what happens they're obviously trying to push us into our jungle trying to invade trying to take some farm off us obviously it's a bit quick a bit sped up then bang we just hit the chandelier throw an ult and that's a couple of knockouts straight off the bat right there follow them down a little bit further espion ult take out the mama swine we keep pushing, and if we look at the levels at the bottom, slowly catching up, getting some scores in here, huge on leech from the Trevenant. And we sort of back off, go towards the objective, looking to try and rip that as soon as it spawns, while still poking and poking and poking. When we roll it on a little bit further, they come in to try and contest it, and we just say, no, not a chance. And we take a second team fight and yeah, get a beautiful wipe. And if you just see that the space of a minute, yeah we've taken from this we take a level lead we get the score eventually up to within eight points ask us how close these games can be it's crazy that what that literally just shows how you managed to get back in a game against a really strong team within the space of a minute look how close that score is now chat 208 to 216 i remember casting that it was a very exciting piece of play for me and robo to see because we were worried coming into that that Anlaha were gonna just continue with the pressure, um, and you know you weren't really gonna get much chance to come into that. But you really showed us how you you can. Those two team fights were incredible, uh, taking out pretty much everybody. The engage was mwah, chef's kiss. It was so good. So yeah, fantastic clip. Um, you know, this is what I'm saying. Like it it did end up being like what three three nil to Anlaha, but the games felt. So close, chat. That if you so close, yeah. if you just look at the scoreline, it doesn't make it wouldn't make sense. Like if you watch the games, they they were so well fought. Um, I mean, to be honest, the third game wasn't close at all. We got completely drafted by by Anlaha. They managed to draft a Zoroark and a Comfy. The Comfy, I think, in that game, like ninety odd thousand healing is sitting on that Zoroark for the game. <laughs> so that was not a close game in the slightest. But the first two games were definitely teams really and i think the second game actually was the complete opposite way around we were dominating the early game and then Amaha got back in because we took the fight that we shouldn't have taken and they ended up taking the ray in this fight but this was we had a good chance of winning this one we used to kind of uh prove this a little bit of a ray fight but this is how close the ray fight ended up being yeah so here we are we're at 145 um in this ray fight, ray fight chat there's like what eight points there between the two teams we see that Gyarados coming in for a flank so let's watch this and see how this uncovers um if i can click play oh, i wish the game was this speed all the time <laughs> i know right it's weird <laughs> hearing myself cast at this speed <laughs> But yeah, there was just a massive Blissey all in the middle of that, because our engage was actually pretty good there. Um, but Blissey came in, saved him, but then we follow him down to the pad, we get a couple of knockouts, we just overstay a little bit and we don't go back, a bit indecisive. And then eventually myself and Metagross decide right, we'll score top, put ourselves ahead, but in that time Anlaha managed to worm the way back into an excellent position and start ripping, but even when he gets down to the rip, it's still super close when it comes to 
securing. Mm. Like Gary does yeah, just see all of them on the scene. It's both tanks that come so close to securing this, and obviously theirs does look at this from the wood oh, hammer wow. so close for them. Mama Swine dives in the next on Earthquake. But it's just how close these games are, and obviously we had. I think in our predictions we had Arcade Aces sort of second bottom, third bottom, yeah. and Nambaha second or third as well. There's not a lot between these two teams. No, I mean, that that was literally a secure away from whoever won that, mate. Like, there was enough people there from both teams for one person just to hit a secure. Um, you know, there's enough of you up as well that you could, you know, if you get the secure, go back and defend because uh, you're in the lead at that point. So... <laughs> A hundred percent. It's a 50-50 swing at that point, which I was so excited with, chat, because these are the kind of Unite games that we want to see. Obviously, it keeps Anlaha entertained in the sense that they know that there's stuff that they can improve on, and they're coming up against a good team that they can improve against, um, and that's the whole point uh, of trying these leagues. So let's move on to the next clip. So this is Misfits versus uh, Plush Keepers. Game two situation. It's close game. First objective um, and back and forth fights in this one. So let's get this up. I think of this left first. No, I've, I have sped it up. But this is a crazy way to approach both objectives. Both teams <laughs> decided to take a completely different approach to the other, which we don't really see too often. But Misfits, we see there, it's rotating top, looking to uh, prioritize the Regilecki top lane. But the issue we've got there is Buzzwall has been out securing Beliefion. It's at level Beliefion. And bot lane, they are giving up some levels as well mm. um by giving away the reggie steel and then eventually push keepers are able to push take out the slow bro get some points in but on the flip side misfits take the reggie lecky they kill the buzzwall and managed to get a load of points in as well it's because how close this game was and this sort of clip just kind of summarizes exactly how close the game is it's 11 points in it at this point both teams taking different sort of approaches and then the fight here it just goes one way, then the other. You think Misfits have it here. And then a big Espion all, but Espion gets taken down. But then Misfits <laughs> overextend and Buzzwall climbs in. And this is just what this game was like throughout the entire match. It was just swinging one way, then the other. Mm. And this game, I think, was the second game. So it was the one that Flush Keeps managed to take a point off Misfits. But yeah. I think when we go forwards for a fight, we see just how close it was to a clean sweep for Misfits. It's, it's crazy, like, this whole entire set, it honestly felt like, you know, Plush Keepers did something, Misfits did the opposite, right? Plush Keepers pushed the bottom lane, Misfits pushed the top lane. Like, it, it happened for the entirety of the set, and it just showed how close this game really, really was. Um, you know, they invade the jungle, so Misfits invades the, the other jungle. Like, it was... <laughs> really good at answering to like what was happening really good uh macro to be honest I, I thought it was fantastic coming from both of these teams so yeah and then yeah this next bit is the ray fight from that game yeah you see misfits they've just gone for a flip with buzzwell missing which is 100 percent the right call because it's got all the cc the, probably the tankiest attack of the uh, plush keepers have but you can see here it starts to stall out a bit buzzwell comes in and gets a kill but it's still anyone's game. You still got that leaf, you know. You got the cram up. You got the blissy up on one side, and you have got the buzzwell on the other. <laughs> Look how close that is. There's nothing in that, and I think if you could switch over very quickly to um, yeah. a skill I've taken. <laughs> oh. Look how close that is. That is crazy. Oh, you can well, see the egg coming in. It was milliseconds <laughs> away. Look at that egg coming in. It won't let me see if I can open it up in the browser because it won't let me get it big, big, big screen chat. But I really want you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> There's the big screen. Look at the egg. Look at how close. Look how so weak it close, is. Man, it's crazy. That is <laughs> that is absolutely bizarre, chat. Here you've got Glaceon. You've got Elder Goss here, like hitting this, and you see the egg. The egg coming in from Docs themselves. <laughs> That's incredible, mate. That is how close they were to taking that entire set. Um, you know the two the at least two one for misfits like wow uh that's the thing as well because if misfits had taken this um this objective and they end up winning the set 3-0 you think oh 3-0 there's a massive difference between the two teams obviously one's on a completely different level but these games will get so close man yeah no 100 percent, mate they really really were this is it is next level pokemon unite um that we're, that we're seeing here but yeah obviously with how close that requires was it 
with this league and this format with you getting a point for each win um mm. and obviously all the goals counting in case there's any ties in terms of points every little small margin like that matters and even more so with obviously sucre sucre and team in dropping out of the league making the league a little bit closer we had what we had misfits predicted to finish one one spot below plush keepers didn't we or two mm. spots below um and obviously they've taken a massive two on win, so it's just absolutely huge for them. Yeah, no, exactly. And this is it. Every this is the thing to you, for you to take away from this chat. Anyone that's listening to the podcast, these games, every single point matters because we play all three games, no matter what. It is like it's not so much a best of three. All three games get played because it's a league basis. So every point goes towards your table, and the points that you score in the game will matter because goal difference. Is how it's going to happen when it comes down to tiebreakers. So every single point you score, even if you are losing, is going to be really valuable uh, to every team in this. So, and we we saw that a lot from the first week. Like people that were, you know, definitely losing that game were still trying to squeeze some points in wherever they could. Um, and I think that's why I love the way that this league is done like that. Right. So, uh, interaction section. What have you got for us, mate? Okay. So obviously we've only got you. Here. <laughs> so it's gonna have to be a bit of a solo challenge so apologies um, listeners because i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> but i think when we get some sort of like interviewees on or even if it's um robo or or i or whoever else wants to to co um co-host with us we can get them to do a little solo challenge like this as well um yeah. so i am going to have a little time here <laughs> and i'm going to give you 30 seconds to name as many moves from the main series game, from one specific type. Oh that shit! Can, and we'll make a little leaderboard for everyone. Oh okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've already accepted I'm going to be bottom for this, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what type do you want? I'll let you pick your type. I don't think that helps. <laughs> I don't think that helps. Um, type, type, fire, fire type. Fire type, right? Give me two seconds. So I also have to get a little sheet out with the all the moves on to make sure you're not making up like infernal blast or something like that. I bet um, that I bet that is one. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. I've given you a point there. Um no, I can confirm that infernal blast is not a it's not an attack. <laughs> Okay, so you've got 30 seconds. Name as many fire type attacks as you can, starting from now. Okay, Infernal Blast, uh, Flamethrower, uh, Bitter Blade, uh, Flame Blast, um, Flare Blitz, uh, <laughs> Ember. Um, oh my god, oh my god, what else, what else, what else? Uh, Flash Fire, no, that's not a move, that's, a, that's an ability. Um, oh, <laughs> Oh my god, what else? What else? What else? Fire Blitz. Oh, fire Spin. Three, fire Spin. Um, two, mythical one. Fire. There you go, just on time. Ooh. Okay, so you named eight, but you also named a fake one, which was Infernal Fire Blast. <laughs> so you got seven. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know what, we'll throw it out there, chat, because you never know. You never know with Pokemon Unite. Like, there's over a thousand Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. I, I, I'm happy with seven, to be honest, in 30 seconds, considering how terrible I am at remembering types, moves, or anything. Um, <laughs> I'm the kind of player that is thankful for EXP share in Pokemon chat, so, you know. <laughs> but I still remember one of my first streams I ever saw of yours, and it was you playing Scarlet and Violet, and you were taking on one of the gym challenges, and you were getting a bit cocky about how easy it was. I mean, you were just getting knocked out and doing absolutely no damage. One of your Pokemon was Talonflame. Mm. You sat there clicking acrobatics and you were doing absolutely nothing to your opponent. You ended up losing. Then you showed us your Pokemon. What were you doing with that with that Talonflame, with acrobatics? So, so I, had, I, I had an item on it. <laughs> I mean, I had an item on it that was that basically meant, I think it was Quick Claw. So it basically meant that like it, it moved quicker. And I was like, that's genius, right? Because then I'm going to, like, Talonflame, Talonflame's quick anyway, so th this is going to be awesome. And then, obviously, Chaos let me know that Acrobatics is a move that does more damage when you're not holding an item. 
Um, but when we start branching out into VGC, we'll keep that sound clip of you saying that Quicklore is genius and see how much shit we get. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be shamed. Shame. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take a. We'll uh, we'll we'll keep a leaderboard for that one, chat, and we'll update it as we as people take on that solo challenge. But what we'll do now is just to uh, finish off the podcast because it's going to be a short one this week. It is we're going to pick our next game next week winners. So let's move over onto the browser. These are the games that we have for next week, chat. I say next week. It's actually this week. It's going to be... By the time this goes out, it's going to be tomorrow. So, <laughs> we have on the Saturday that's going to be casted by myself, and I believe it's going to be Mano, which I'm excited for, um, Bootista's Gang and Arcade Aces, a game that I'm extremely excited for, chat. Um, I think that's going to be a really interesting one. Arcade Aces putting up a fantastic fight with Anne Lahar, uh, Anne Lahar last week. Um, Bautista Gang is going to be their first time in the league, so we're going to be witnessing what they can do and what they're going to bring. And then after that, we have Mem Ragnarok, which I'm also excited for because one of my close friends, Tunak, is on that team. Um, they're also going to be hosting some tournaments soon, so I'm excited to see them come up against Plush Keepers, who are just without a doubt one of my favorite teams in Pokemon Unite for the EU region. Um, and then on Sunday, because we're not finished there, chat, we've got some more games for you. We have Misfits against Blazing Phoenix. Blazing Phoenix ended up going up against Inter last week, so at least they're not going up against one of the best teams in the EU. <laughs> but Misfits are up there, so it's still a challenge. Um, but hopefully they can rise to that challenge like the Phoenix they are. And then... Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm here all week, chat. And then <laughs> I think this is... Probably, if if it's not if it's not Bautista Gan against Arcade Aces, I think teaming against Oblivion Gaming is going to be the most interesting one of the week. To be honest, with you. I don't know about you, but I think that is going to be an incredibly close game. Hundred percent, and I think Oblivion. I said sort of in our preview that they were sort of my dark horse for the tournament, as it was. Um, I was more so finishing in the top four and maybe upsetting second and third place, but obviously now. Ray Sucre are gone, Inter are gone. They've got a huge opportunity to win this league, but I think they're an incredible team. I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, as we look at the teams, I think for me, I'm like, who who, who could win it now, realistically, now that, you know, Inter isn't there? I think Anla has still up there, but I honestly think of all the teams that we've had ad added, could be up there, you know, Oblivion, 100%. It's such a close league now that we look at all the teams, chat. I wouldn't be able to put them in a late, in a table, to be honest, on, on what I predict. But, you know, as we speak about predictions, I predict, coming into round two, that I think Arcade Aces are going to take Putista's gang. I think they've learned from uh, Amaha, so... I'm hoping they've taken what they've learned into practice chat and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll see if they manage that. I think Plush Keepers will just edge out Mem, uh, Mem Ragnarok, but we haven't seen them play. So this is just, I've seen Plush Keepers play. And I think Misfits are going to get the head of Blazing Phoenix. And I'm, I'm going to say, just because I casted them last week, Team Int are just going to in closer to getting the win against Oblivion Gaming. Just, I've seen them play... They are a fantastic team. They're my predictions. What are your score predictions, though? Very easy just to say, oh, this team's going to win. But Okay, I think... Are there going to be any 3 O's? Are there going to be 2-1s? No, I don't think we'll have any 3 O's, mate. Mm. May Maybe Misfits, but I think... I don't know. I, I don't think we'll have any 3 O's, mate. I think these games are going to be really close. I think we'll have 2-1s across the board. Okay. Um, I mean, for me, Bautista Scan versus, obviously, my team, Market Aces. Um, big boost for us is that I am no longer going to be playing Mages. <laughs> I had to fill for KP, who was missing, but he's thankfully back, so I can go to my, my safe spot on sports. So that's a massive boost for us, because we don't have any of my any of my crappy Espeon games. Um, <laughs> I'm going to back us. Last week, I predicted us to lose 3-0, and I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. Mm. Um Agreed. Yeah, this week I'll say I'm going to back us. I'll say two on to us. Uh, Mem Ragnarok versus Plush Keepers. See, this is really tough because obviously <laughs> we've seen Plush Keepers and they've gone up against Misfits. This is it, mate. It's been ridiculously <laughs> close. And then Mem is sort of in that pool of teams that I thought anyway with Misfits, Plush Keepers, ourselves being very close. I 
again, I'm, I'm just going to sort of bottle it and go with we've seen plush keepers play as a five. We've not seen Ragnarok play as a five, so two ones plush keepers. Uh, Misfits plays in Phoenix. I think Misfits win. I'm going to say 3 0. I think Misfits control that. I think that'll be comfortable for them. And then Team In versus OG. <laughs> I've seen Team Mint play, and obviously they won the tournament. They're very impressive. I'm going to go with OG. I'm going to say 2-1 to OG. Fair dues, mate. You're going to stick with your dark horses. I understand <laughs> I understand that, mate. <laughs> like Zoinks with his mama swine. We're not giving it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stick to your beliefs. Zoinks did, and he should yeah. have done. <laughs> He's inspired me. He stuck to that mama swine. Everyone laughed at him, including, including you, Tano. You laughed at him as well, secretly and to his face. <laughs> No, I, did, I did not. No, S- secretly, <laughs> and, secretly and to his face. Like, why would I bother doing it secretly? He <laughs> um, calls for you there. <laughs> we'll have to alongside these people. <laughs> No, but yeah, I, I think they're really good shouts, mate. Chat, yo, listeners, let us know what you think is going to be the results of this week. But we hope to see you there. I'm really excited for it. Um, it's going to be a fantastic week. And I could not be over the moon more with the teams that we've had added to this league. It makes it a much closer league. I think every single week is going to be contested games. And that's the kind of Pokemon Unite action people want to see. It's the kind that I want to cast. And it just gets me freaking fired up uh, for this league realistically so uh yeah yeah i mean as much as you want to see obviously the big names and the big teams playing it, it'll get boring if you can see them free everyone every single week and mess around in, like all all tanks comps and obviously it's fun the first week and the second week they're doing it, third week they're doing it and it's like okay well there's no point watching but all of these games are completely watchable and yeah if you're worth your time yeah and the teams are learning from it as well like as you mm. say i think you know if you end up pulling out like these defender comps and all that kind of stuff which you know fair enough you want to have some fun but i don't think you'll learn anything from that in this league so i understand going to a, a league like lfpu because the caliber of players there are much higher you've got a prize pool a big one as well so you know those big teams are gonna go to that league so it's more challenging for those uh those teams but this one it's a very accessible league anyone in the eu is happy to join and all these teams now are actually quite close uh, in skill level realistically so yeah it's going to be more entertaining for everybody involved teams are going to get stuff to take away from it and work on so yeah i'm really excited chat i'm i'm really hyped for this i'm I'm loving doing it i'm loving the podcast that we're doing as well i've been wanting to be on a podcast for like the <laughs> forever um i remember i remember speaking to chaos about setting one of these up like years ago so you know it's uh I, i'm happy with it but that's going to be it for the episode today it's quite a short one but uh, well i say that we're on about 30 minutes so not too bad but we okay. will be back yeah we'll be back next week obviously we've got all games happening this weekend so we'll have a lot to discuss next time We'll catch you there. I'm Spartan Tano. Spartan underscore Tano on the purple app. Catch me on Twitter as well. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you around. And I'm Chaos. I'm Chaos Caspian on... What colour app is that? It's blue, isn't it? Or is it black now? <laughs> black and white. The black and white app. I am Chaos Control TTV on the purple app. And I've not yet got my blue and white or orange and black accounts. Yet. <laughs> they are coming soon. It's popular demand. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something about orange and black. <laughs> this Coming podcast soon. is 18 plus only. T's and C's apply. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys, or even listening over on Spotify. We'll catch you next time. Bye.